All right. Welcome, everybody. Hardcover comic. This is Matt. Hopefully, Mike will be joining us uh, shortly. He was driving back from Toronto in a snowstorm. So uh, hopefully he'll be joining us. But with us today, we got the guys from Universe Comics. Uh, we got Dave, we got Gerald, and we got Sky. Um, do you guys kind of want to, we can go around, you guys can introduce yourselves and, and kind of talk about what it is that you do there at Universe yeah, let's start with Gerald. Gee, you're first. <laughs> they always put me first. Okay. That's right. <laughs> you came first in all of this. So That's right. Yeah, you got to <laughs> fall into it. <laughs> all right. So, hey, everybody. I'm the shy guy with a big mouth, Gerald DuBose. I am one of the founder and also president for Universe Comics, also one of the writers and um, editor and clown. Uh, I'm learning my way through editing books. So, um, I play that role as well. All right, perfect. Excellent. Sky? Yeah, sure. I'll jump in there. My name is Sky Shadow. I'm based in Houston, Texas, and I do marketing for Universe Comics and just a general fan of uh, good literature, good writing, great storytelling. So um, I'm just super happy to be a part of this company. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm Dave Gao. Uh, I'm working with the universe on branding and, and all that represents the company, um, primarily because uh, when I met G a year ago, um, uh, I just absolutely fell in love with what the company was doing. I went, uh, let's talk, let's talk. And so, you know, sort of just got connected in that way and have been been helping out where I can. Very cool, very cool. So, for those that maybe are not aware, Universe is a is a newer um, label out there, right? You said about a year or so ago, I think, is when you started, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, gee, I guess can you go ahead and give us kind of the rundown of what brought it all up, how it got started, how you know you kind of got started in this whole thing? Sure, uh, it was kind of by happenstance. One of my friends who. Um, works in the um, movie uh, pop culture in industry. I will put it that way. Kind of, uh, he had reached out to me and we were just having a discussion about, you know, um, that companies, uh, es especially some of the larger ones, are looking for new titles, uh, new interesting stories to tell. And with the popularity of Black Panther, something should be done. And I was in total agreement. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Something should be done. We do need more great stories like that. Uh, that represent diversity in in storytelling and he was like yeah i need you to write it <laughs> <laughs> and i went from yes to no real quick i was like wait <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't write comics like you know I, i'm in the business arena now I, I used to do performance poetry right now uh, i mean at the time most of my work was doing speaking on business and um, storytelling and, and how to use story in, in your business and sales. And he, and he was like, you teach people to build teams all the time. What are you talking about? The excuses build bridges to nowhere. And I said, okay, so you use my own words on me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. He was like, don't make any excuses, just get it done. Uh, I said, okay, I don't know any artists. Get it done. Call me when it's done. We'll we'll sell a few thousand copies and then let's let's talk. So I was tasked with the um, with with the task of assembling a team that would be able to bring a story to life. So um, it started out there, and um, I assembled a, a writing team. Reached out to some of my friends that are writers, that are really great writers that I I, I believe in, and I had the concept. I just came up with the concept pretty quickly, and then I reached out to our lead artist Bobby, and. Um, Pitched him on the concept of what the character was. I had a 3D model rendering by somebody that did some stuff um, like off of a video game for it and gave it to Bobby and Bobby got on board. And in a few days, he had a full mock-up of the character and then the juices really got going. And so that's how the freight train got started. And that was back in 2021 during the height of what was the pandemic. Yeah. And then the the character that you were talking about that you guys created um, is a uh, Enigma. Is that how you pronounce it? Enigma. Enigma. So just with a Y. Just with a okay. Y. That's all. Yep. Same so name. yeah. So Enigma. Um, and I gotta say, it is a pretty awesome looking character. 
Um, I got to read the, the preview edition. I haven't got to read the volume one yet. We talked about that one earlier, but I did read the preview edition and I really liked it. Wrote something up on, on Instagram for it and stuff as well. And it's, uh, it's very well written, first of all. And, uh, oh yeah, there we go right there. Hopefully what I'm going to planning on do is I'll try to throw in some screen, some, uh, panels and things like that as well into the video here so people can actually get a better look at it but um yeah really awesome really well designed uh, uh character as well and and i read that book and i thought you know because we get stuff all the time where people are like hey can you check this out or whatever and i'm always down to like read something new um but a lot of times it's you know it's okay some of it some of it you know very very rarely is it something that i'm like this is really really good and uh that so happened to be the case with this one where i read it and i, I really dug it and i was like i like where this is going and i like what you guys are doing so um happy that we could finally you know get together and kind of do this i know mike and i have been super busy but uh yeah so happy is happy is heck that you know we can do all this so um i know you guys i've been seeing on your instagram you guys have been going to a lot of cons and stuff a lot of the local cons i think you said you were from the virginia area uh well yeah from the dc virginia area yes. dc virginia area yeah so you guys did you guys ever go to uh there's a smaller con out there our old podcast had a booth there a few years ago i think at the time they called it nova con um and i want to say it got rebranded to something else now um but it was like a northern virginia it was like right in the outside of dc um fairfax comic-con uh i know we did fair we we've been all over the country uh so we've been chicago uh philadelphia area um we haven't been to new york yet but um a lot in maryland dc virginia north carolina uh <laughs> so we've been traveling a lot so. what kind of uh you know what kind of uh response are you guys getting at these cons all right it's it's been pretty overwhelming actually i mean you know the reception that we get is uh very very high i mean and like you said these people uh that we call our universe fam not fans because they feel more like family and that's kind of the approach we take mm. are just they they love they love the character. They love the story. So it, it's intriguing to them. So uh, it's been an overwhelming response. Yeah, it's fascinating, Matt, that, uh, you know, sitting at a booth at a con, because um, uh, I'm coming at this from, you know, a longtime comic geek perspective, right? Like it, admittedly right here. And it's fun to watch um, when people have no idea what it is, right? This is a new product. This is, this is you know, a new book. Um, many people are seeing this for the very first time when they walk by the booth at a con. So they'll, they'll walk by, you know, and they, at first, first they're not making too much eye contact, right? Just a, hmm, what's that? And then they see, oh, wow. They see the art. They see some of the posters that we've got at the booth. And then they, they sort of come over and they start to sort of look and, and then, you know, um, our resident big mouth will in, engage that's G that's self-proclaimed. I didn't give him that title. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, start engaging and talking about the story and then they pick up the book and and that's like you just sort of see the the falling in love moment. They're just like, wow, because, you know, it's a it's a, you've held the book. It's you know, it's a it's a premium quality all the way through. So they hold the book and they're flipping through it. And it's just so cool to sit at sit at the booth and watch that um, that connection that people make when they they pick it up and they see it for the first time. Very cool. Yeah. What is a uh, what have you Sky? Have you been going to any of the cons? Yeah, let's see. The last one that I went to was in Chicago at uh, C two E two, and I got a chance to sit at the booth as well and kind of be a part of that whole experience. And just like Dave was talking about, is really cool. Um, I personally did not contribute to the graphics, nor to the printing, nor to the writing. So I get to see it like, wow, that's amazing as well. You know, when they're walking up and they're just like Dave is saying, people are looking at it. Hey, what is this? And then they pick it up and they feel it and they go, oh, this is different. This is nice. And then they're checking out the graphics. Whoa, this is really awesome. I'm like, yeah, that's Bobby right there. <laughs> you know, and then we tell them kind of what we're about that, you know, we want to elevate stories from underrepresented communities. And they go, interesting. Okay. 
So, you know, then they get into the whole vibe of what is or who is Enigma. And then that's further intriguing for them. So it, it's been really cool to kind of see that whole response and be a part of that. Very cool. So what is the, for those that are, that are watching or listening or, or what have you, what is sort of the, I guess you could say, what would be like the elevator pitch for, for Enigma? Like, what is it about, um, you know, why should people check out the book? Other than I say it's great from what I've read and they need to go read it. But like, what is your guys's elevator pitch on that? So G does it the best, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and since he's got the stereo mic going on with the headset. <laughs> the, the stereo room. mic? Really? That's, that's, that's right. Dude, it is, it's in my headset. <laughs> the stereo mic. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, well, if we're talking about the full series, um, we, we usually do it by a case by case, right? Because it's episodes. And we call them episodes because the book reads... It's intended to read and it does read like a television show. So um, but Enigma is a dark superhero tale that is set in Wolfton Dream City, our version of Washington, D.C. Episode one follows the Day family, a prominent family within Wolfton Dream City that through their family turmoil and eventual fallout leads to the need for the creation of the antihero Enigma. So that is the basic synopsis of what episode one is. It is the backstory, the origin story of how Enigma comes to be. Very cool. Very cool. And how many episodes are, are out currently? Or how many do you have planned, I guess, to come out? It is a nine episode story arc. Okay. And one is out now. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And then when is two going to be dropping? We plan to have episode two for our universe fam at GalaxyCon um, at the end of March. Oh, very good. That's coming up quick yeah. then. Mm -hmm. That is very, very cool. Um, are there so once you kind of wrap up with this nine issue arc, is, are you going to continue the story? Are you going to create new characters? Like, or what? What is kind of the plan? Yeah, you're going to see more. You're going to see more of Universe Comics. I mean that's that's it. There's a there's a lot going on here behind the scenes that we're we can't quite yet announce that we're not quite there for. But the whole point of Universe Comics is that you know we say you are the universe, you are the you in universe, right? That that we are looking we, we're looking to lift up more voices and more stories, and we have some some great things planned. So while there while this is the arc of Enigma. And don't read that as saying there will never be more from Enigma. We're just saying this is that initial plan, one, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? That that there are some other stories in the works that um, uh, we're very excited to tell. So, awesome. you know, stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really awesome stuff. That's It's got to be pretty exciting to see this kind of grow from, you know, an idea where you're like, yeah, nope. <laughs> into into this into this thing where you guys are now you know traveling the country and attending large cons and and watching people physically hold the book and flip through it for the first time like that's just got to be the most amazing thing that you guys could be experiencing right now i mean that's just incredible um it, it is absolutely mind-blowing to see um as dave and sky both alluded to the reaction that people have when they see the book uh, because the thing is and and we're in we're, we even have some uh retail partners now that the book is starting to go out throughout the country a little bit with um just but the reaction they have when they look because people haven't seen the character and they're just like what is that they're just always like that really looks interesting but i don't know what a y enigma or enigma is <laughs> so um but that's Again. the beauty of it because it draws them in and then they got to check it out, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think if I remember right, I saw some pictures on your guys' Instagram a while back. If I remember correctly, people, I don't remember if it's a costume you guys had or if people were cosplaying as Enigma, but I had seen some photos and I was like, okay, that's cool. That yeah. that looks really good. Yes. Yes. Um, someone wanted to do a, a cosplay for it and they showed up at our very first con. 
Oh, it was wow. The first one we had ever done. Mm-hmm. And it was for the preview. <laughs> it wasn't even for episode one. The very first con we show up at, and somebody had saw some of the stuff we had posted online, they came up as Enigma. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. <laughs> that has got to be one of like, number one, that would just be a really cool experience no matter what. But for that to be the very first con ever on top of it, that's just got to like, they just set the bar way too high. Like that's just, <laughs> exactly. that's just incredible. It's like, uh, who is this guy? Did you pay him? I mean, <laughs> he's our number one fan or do you know his name? Or you haven't met him. Okay. <laughs> that is exactly. awesome. Yeah, it's it's reinforcing because like what you were saying, Matt. Um, you know, you talk about you see a you see a new book for the first time, and sometimes it's just oh, good good for you. Uh, and in this case, it's just kind of reinforcing. It's like wow, uh, Gerald did assemble a serious team, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole point. Like the 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 effort here wasn't let's just make a comic book. No, it was like let's make a real let's tell a really good story and let's tell it in a beautiful way. And uh, Bobby Lexa, the artist and, and the entire creative team, um, you know, what they put together evokes that response. It makes people want to do a cosplay. It makes people not want to put the book down when they see it. Right. Like it's uh, something that, you know, we're we're really proud to be out there and, and talking about. So I, I think that's one of the really unique things about Universe Comics is that we've been able to accomplish that right out of the gate. And that that's that's the intent for everything that we've got planned. Very cool. Very, very cool. So what is everybody's kind of uh, uh, geek origin story, if you will? Let's dive into a little bit about what makes all of you guys tick. So um, what I guess we'll start off with, with G there. So what would you say is your kind of geek origin story? What kind of got you into this world of, of comics and things? Well, I mean, as a kid, I always loved comics. I used to collect comics as a kid, and I am mad that I threw or I let my mom throw all of them away when I was younger. Now looking at the market for those collectibles, but I was drawn in by, like most of us, by Marvel and DC. I was particularly more drawn to the X-Men. I just loved what they represented. I loved the fact that it was about people that were looked at as outcast in society just for the abilities that they have, not for anything else. Uh, And it kind of reinforced the thing for me that people fear what they don't understand. And even as a little kid, I was drawn to that type of stuff. I'm like, oh man, this is really cool because um, all of them had all these unique sets of powers and also their own unique different looks. And had their different background stories. So X-Men was the thing for me. And then, of course, video games came and I lost my mind. So, uh, (laughs) But X-Men, I would say, was my first real, I got to have it, got to be involved, got to know the story thing. The Chris Claremont run. Yeah, I was going to say, was it like the Chris Claremont, John Byrne era of X-Men? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that was that was some some of the best X Men probably in the history of that entire comic. So yeah, it's a great jumping on point. <laughs> I, I, I would definitely agree. <laughs> yeah. It's a great jumping on point. This guy, what's your what's your geek origin story? Uh, okay, so mine it, it starts very benignly, um, and it's got it's got a few kind of bumps and lulls in it, right? So my family full of string players, right? Classical musicians, right? We all had to play an instrument growing up. And so on Saturdays, we would go to this group rehearsal um, that was kind of in the suburbs outside of DC and Maryland. Um, And this was for my sisters. So what should I do for four hours during this long group rehearsal? Well, I noticed a comic book shop, a used comic book shop along the way. And I would ask my mom if I could walk to it. So it's like a half mile walk. And so I, every Saturday I would walk to this comic book shop just to kill time. And so I would fall in love with the, the different comic books that were there. And I started to collect them. So that's like my first initial taste into comics. And I took a pause after teenagehood or whatever. Um, and then Gerald brought me back into it. Now, how did I meet Gerald? 
another literary pursuit. So I was an English major in college and I started helping people to publish their books of poetry. And I began performing poetry and that's mm -hmm. when I met Gerald. So enter Gerald, <laughs> stage left. <laughs> and so I helped him publish his first book. And so that's how we got acquainted through performing, publishing and marketing books. And then a whole lifetime went past and then Gerald tapped me on the shoulder and I'm 45. And he's like, dude, um, let's, I, let's get into this comic book thing that I got going on. And I'm like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> so that, that's how I got back into it. But I've always been a fan of anime and animation, you know, Transformers, yes. the, the, the first series of trans, Transformers. And yes, um, I'm all about the Avengers and the whole like Marvel universe. So yeah, okay. that's where I'm at. Yeah. Awesome. Have you seen the new Ant-Man Quantumania? I tried to see it on Tuesday, but my family wouldn't allow me because it's Taco Tuesday is this new thing they've adopted <laughs> at the house. And we do Taco Tuesday. I'm not fighting that. <laughs> yeah. So we have plans to see it on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I can't I, wait to see it. I'm a big fan of the MCU too, but um, I, it's certain times when I just look at a movie and I say, yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people were saying that about Ant-Man. I took my two oldest to go see it, and uh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of the reviews and stuff beforehand, so I kind of mm -hmm. went in with some lower expectations, but I don't know. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. like not going to spoil anything, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's on par with the other Ant-Man movies. I think people were maybe expecting an Ant-Man movie to be like, you know, uh end game or something it's like no 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 like that's not yeah. no this is two completely different things like this is this is a different thing so i enjoyed it i thought it was on par with the first two movies but yeah i was hoping that it would be like a next level up and give us more right of the story because it's supposed to like kick off the next phase of the it mcu does so a little bit that. in regards to kang i mean that's not a spoiler yeah, yeah. everybody knew he was in it um so sure. it definitely does a little bit regarding kang so you get to see more and i will say this jonathan majors in that movie holy shit is that guy good um <laughs> he yeah that's a given yeah that dude is incredible um i first saw him in uh lovecraft lovecraft country, country. i was gonna yeah. say that's where everybody knows him from yes yeah. that's where i first saw him at and i was like i was blown away lovecraft country was phenomenal i yeah, absolutely was. love that show i was yeah. bummed that they're not doing a second season yeah. and uh i was blown away by his performance in that movie and or in that show and uh so then when i started kind of following him a little bit and then i saw like he's gonna be like the new big bad in creed three and then you know the he was in Loki as Kang and now he's in Ant Man and stuff as Kang he's, and I'm like this guy he this is gonna be a massive massive year for him so mm -hmm. yep yeah yeah he deserves I, it though I, yeah. I I think he's very talented I mean um and the, the, I think they cast the right personality for Kang yes I think he has that type of demeanor that you would imagine of a Kang that comes to life. Yep. So um it's interesting they chose to introduce him in Ant Man, but you know, that's that it, it, it's interesting. So yeah. Um I, I can't wait to hear what everybody thinks about it. Yeah, yeah. No, Jonathan Majors lost my it was funny. My 14 year old, we were sitting there and we were watching the movie, and there's a part where he had like a ripped sleeve or something. You saw his arm, and my son looked over at me, he goes, Damn, he's ripped. And I was like, you ain't seen the trailer for Creed three yet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you need to see the not trailer for radar. Creed three. I go, that dude got huge. I was like, he's <laughs> shape, but he got huge for this. So, yes, yeah, all that Marvel MCU studio money to get the best trailers. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There you go. There you go. Yes. Dave, how about right, your so, origin yeah. story, man? Yeah, what's your origin story? <laughs> My secret origins. Um, uh, long time geek. I'm, I'm old enough to have been the target age for Star Wars, the original Star Wars. Right. Uh, and so I, I knew pretty early on, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going into, to special effects. I'm going into movies. I'm going into doing that. And of course, in, in, in high school, um, I, when I started collecting comics, um, 
and kept that going for a long time, but, uh, you know, really got into it. But, uh, the other thing, you know, so I, I went to school, I studied film and I studied uh, animation primarily because I'm also a cartoonist and I want you know, I love that. Uh, in high school, I even drew my own, you know, superhero comics and they were horrible, which is why I'm not the artist on this book. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, I can do, I can do cartoons, but I can, comics is a different thing, but, um, uh, you know, so so I've just had this uh, uh, long time just connection uh, overlapping with the industry. Um, I have uh, since then. I'm an I am an animator by day. Uh, I do uh, I run an animation business. Um, I uh, have had a, a published comic strip in a newspaper. Um, it's you know just all of this. This is just how I connect. So. You know, I can talk for hours on Marvel movies like that. I haven't seen the new Ant Man, but I mean, I like I can definitely you know that stuff i still just really get uh, uh just a, a lot of um just a lot of connection a lot of j- just joy really just getting into stories like that comic book stories and not just superhero stories right like um today i'm still you know fascinated by you know reading things like nice house on the lake or yes. um you know just like dip- stories that aren't superhero stories even but yeah. that take you down paths that you weren't expecting you know mm-hmm. so um uh so the, you know that that's that's where i come from and i'm still there very very cool yeah no last how that one's great i that's a great 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 title um so what would you say g did you draw you know kind of your your inspiration from for enigma you know kind of getting getting back to that you had said that um you know your friend had called you and said you know we need more stuff like you know black panther black black panther was blowing up at the time uh and rightfully so and you know we need more more stuff like that so you said that the the city that you created is sort of like you know your version uh the, your universe's version of the dc area uh so what did you draw from inspiration did you draw from like things that you saw growing up did you draw from you know other comics other creators like where did you kind of draw your inspirations from um to really kind of start crafting your story that's a great question uh it just came from the fact of, like you said, things I saw growing up um, as well as kind of the vibe of the city. Like, I, I love great stories that it feels like everything has a reason to be there. Like, I think the thing that makes Batman really cool, even though he can't be Superman. Anyway, um, even the thing that makes Batman really cool is that Gotham itself feels like a character. It feels like the city has a pulse. So what we wanted to do was have um, the environment as much a part of the story as the characters that are within it. And um, that was the kind of story that we were setting out to write. And um, when I sat down with the writing team and we were going over everything, that that was our aim for there to be an atmosphere around the story for there to be a certain air in in different airs in different parts of the city, because that's how major cities are, right? If you you go to New York, Brooklyn is different than the Bronx and Manhattan is different than both of them. So um, same thing happens in DC, Northeast, it has a different feel than Southeast and Southwest Mm -hmm. has a different feel than Northeast. So uh, we, we wanted to draw on all of that and use that to be able to drive a story that was compelling for people to see and also compelling for them to read. So um, the inspiration for the city stuff just came from growing up in that type of uh, major metropolitan area. So would you say, is there any like kind of Easter eggs or anything in there where people that they're from the DC area, they're going to read it and they're going to go, Oh, I know exactly what he's referring to in that one. Yes. Yes. We have, we, uh, Bobby is really great at putting those Easter eggs in there. So there's, it's quite a few little Easter eggs and nods to actual DC. If you look at the cover of, uh, actual episode one, the, um, original cover, cover a, um, you even see street signs and, and you will see like it'll say like M Street Northwest on it and stuff like that. So 
um, people that are from the area will be able to say, oh, wow, I really connect with that. And people that have ever visited will say, oh, man, that's really cool. I think I went down that street before. So, yes. Very, very cool. I always love it when people throw in Easter eggs and stuff. And even if I don't even catch it right away, but somebody else says, oh, did you see this Easter egg? And then I go back and relook at it. I love it. I, I absolutely love the Easter egg thing. I think it's great. Well, well, I got one for you now that I'll reveal reveal to you because people can't get the preview anymore because the preview, again, we do very limited run. We haven't gotten that far yet, but we, we'll talk about that later. Everything we do is limited run with the companies. One run, that's it. We don't do reruns. So there's no second editions and third editions of our books. It's one run, we're done. But um, in the preview, Matt, if you go back and take a look, um, on the big splash page when Enigma first comes out and he's and Enigma jumps over the car, I'll say, um, if you look as the guy is cutting down the alley, there's graffiti on the wall. This is 1022. And that was the release date for the preview. That was oh, when we debuted it at Baltimore Comic Con. That's why it says 1022 on that wall. That is awesome. That is really, really cool. I'll have to go back and double check that one. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> wouldn't have got that Easter egg, but that is really, really cool. Yes. yes. So you were you were talking about, you know, print run. Like it's a it's a one and done kind of print run thing. There's no there's no reprints or or anything like that. Um do you see that as a good thing, a bad thing? Do you see that as a as a hindrance for maybe like later on if the comic does blow up? Or are you like, no, because it's out there, it could be out there digitally and anybody can grab the digital copy? You know, like how how do you kind of view that? Um, well, I'm sure all of us will have something to say about this, but I we we see that as a great thing because the collectability factor, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the problem that happened and why the bubble burst, uh, quote unquote, in the comic industry in the early 2000s were that people were hoarding all of these books, but there were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 runs of the book. So you collecting and, and having some of those issues didn't matter because there were a million copies out there with you, with you to have access to. So what we wanted to do was cater to one, the comic book lover, but also to the collector that there are going to be less than there are only 2,500 books in each original run. If it's a variant cover, there is even less than that. So there will never be more than five than, than 6,000 copies of any edition of the book until we get to the full graphic novel. Now, once we do the full graphic novel or the omnibus, whichever one you want to label that, then that one will be continued to be available for resale. But the serialized issues, the collectible pieces will always be limited run. And, and that way it feels special. You can't get 20,000 people don't get to own the, the Rolls Royce Phantom that comes out this year. That's it. You, you, you got a run of 10,000 of those. So if you're building a premium type of experience, you have to, make it a premium type of experience where everybody wants to be part of that versus it just, Oh, well I can get it next time. Uh, it's no next time. <laughs> yeah. Get it now. So where can people pick it? If people were interested and they're like, I want to grab a physical copy of this. Like you said that, that I know you had said that uh, it was starting to kind of ship out retail wise. Um, but is there like a website or anything that people can go to where they can grab it physically? if they don't happen to catch you guys at a con? Yeah, absolutely. Universecomics.com is, you know, of course, make sure you spell it with you. Y-O-U is you in universe, you in a verse. Uh, Universecomics.com. Uh, we're pretty proud of that site. We've got a, a lot of stuff going on there and we're going to continue to update it. But there is a merchandise page. So as long as we still have copies of the book, um, and we do still have some of episode one right now, um, but as long as we have it, then they'll be available on our merchandise page. But you can also, you know, just for the just to make sure I get that plug in there, you can get shirts and you can get hoodies. And you I was about get, to like, say, some, where can I grab one yeah. of those hoodies at that I see G wearing right there? I was yeah, like, I like those. Yep. I'm a hoodie guy. I love hoodies. So there, right there, go to the, go to the store on the page on universecomics.com. Indeed, Y O U N A verse Y O U N A V E R S E <laughs> comics.com. Want to spell it out for them just in case they just in case they start trying to spell it just Y O U. Interverse, no, Y O U 
N A V E R S E comics. Com. Yeah, we'll throw it down. We'll throw a link and stuff down in the description as well, so that way people can people can catch it there too. But no, that's awesome. I'm definitely gonna have to pick up a hoodie. Um, I was looking at that. I was like, yeah, I need I need to pick up a hoodie. I'm a big hoodie guy anyway, so I was like, I need to I need to check this out. Uh, yeah, Repos. Cool. Is it also? It's a. Is it available digitally? I know you had sent me a digital copy, but I didn't know if it was available like on Comicsology or anything like that for people to check out. Uh, not not as of yet. Uh, there we do have some special things planned that will allow people to be able to have access to some of the back episodes. Um, those those things are on the horizon. So uh, we we are working on those diligently to allow people to um be able to catch up in in a fun and in interesting way okay that'll be cool awesome well i definitely look for like i said i'm gonna throw up some splash pages and stuff but uh do you guys have anything else you guys want to plug talk about what have you well i think what i just i want to tap back into something that that g was saying that you know fascinates me because me as a hobbyist outside of the universe one thing you know i'm i'm still collecting comments to this day and and I'm I'm kind of twofold, right? Like I will go and I'm say that book, I don't care what people say, that book looks like it's good. I like the art and I want to read that story. I'm just gonna get that. I don't care what people say. And then I also really connect to oh, there's that's something that's limited. Like I I, I do like those, you know, one in twenty five, one in fifty covers. Um, you know, like uh, every now and then I'm like, oh, that's really good, or that the artist that does um you know some some type of uh, a, a variant cover that's that's limited like i like that collectability so that's i mean that's one thing that you know just really excites about me about this is like i i didn't come up with this but this is what we're doing and you know that really excites me as as a collector because again the the every time that there is one of these universe comics you know enigma or anything else that we're going to be doing there the effort that we're putting into making it uh it, you know joe joe mentioned like rolls royce like like it, it really is a, a limited and when it's gone it's gone kind of thing so that's really the feel that we're going for is that you know we want you to feel like oh you've connected to something that is limited and different um but that that's not the gimmick right it's not just a gimmick it's like oh hurry up we cranked this out and called it limited like no we put yeah. a lot of work into it and it's limited right so very very yeah cool. yeah I, I i would just add the whole thing we our, our whole model with creating the books we call it uh spa we, we say we give comics the spa treatment right so uh, we're going to have to get you're going to have to get a physical copy, Matt, in order to understand. So, yeah, no, we, I'll, yeah. I'll, if they're still on there, I'll grab that when I grab the hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, it what well, well, we call it the spa treatment because we call it storied premium art. Uh, the thing that and the hole that we saw in the market with comics that we felt that we could help fill was the fact of that people don't appreciate comics as art they're kind of like oh you're you're playing if you love comics like oh you like comics no no comics can be considered fine art so um the whole spa thing is story premium art so everything from the quality of the paper to the quality of the artwork to the quality of the story will once we create a premium feel for our for our universe fam that get to enjoy the book and for the collector that wants to say hey you know what I got Enigma, I got the preview of Enigma and only a thousand people got it and nowhere can can it be found right now. So um, just creating that full fledged experience because anything that's premium is a sensory experience. So from the touch, the look, the feel, as well as the uh, type of story that they get from the book, we wanna be able to create that premium type of quality experience for our family. Yeah, and gee, if I could add to that, um, talking about this spa experience, that gives us an opportunity to position the book into some places uh, and some venues where you would not normally think to find a comic book, like maybe in a cigar lounge, um, maybe against some, um, some fine urban clothing, right? That you, some of these specialty shops, right? 
maybe in um, a, a music festival, right? So we're, we're looking for those kind of opportunities to, um, to position that are brand aligned with us. Now I said brand. <laughs> there you go, Dave. Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, that should bring a smile to Dave's face. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So that's that's a really unique opportunity for us where you also look at the, the people that like that seek out those types of um, experiences. So we're we're trying to find that nice intersection of comic lover and then consumer of of, of fine experiences. Nice. I, I like that. I I guess I never I never thought about that before. Like from like a comic like you said, like a cigar lounge or you know, at a you know, urban clothing store or what have you. I was like, oh never thought about that. It makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of kids these days that because of the MCU and because of the DCEU and everything else, like they're now learning about comics i think for us we read the comics and then we saw the movies but for them right. it's kind of like it's it's right. backwards for them but whatever it takes for them to get into comics i'm down for so absolutely uh, like yeah, the whole that, like spider-verse right yeah, <laughs> yeah. spider-verse was come huge. on right second one's coming out and you know my son right. he's 13 he's finding out all about this through the movies and we were in a comic shop in houston because that's where i'm based um in a comic shop and he's like oh this is what this is where all that came from yeah it did and yeah it did. And, and and i will say one one of the um one of the paths that we have gone down we are aligning with uh even potential like art galleries and stuff so there are a couple of those on the horizon that are carrying the book wow that's really cool yeah, because it's not just connecting, like we were talking about, you know, connecting with kids and, and figuring out different ways. But this is connecting with the adults who formerly thought uh, comic books, that's just, you know, kid stuff. That's just silly mm -hmm. stuff. And and we know, we geeks know that um, these books rival novels. These books are uh, incredibly well done. So, you know, and I'm, I'm not talking about just universe. I mean, like there's so many good stories and good books out there um, that anyone who just brushes off a comic book because of the phrase comic book, they're missing out. So that, that placement that gives an opportunity to say, hey, you know, perhaps you're missing something. And so if, if an unexpected item is, is in front of you and you're like, what? what is that doing there there's a better chance you're going to pay attention to it right if it's you know those those people so hopefully you know our, our our goal we do want to you know we want to make sure that we are amplifying underrepresented voices we want to be able to get those stories into new places right so that's that's a great way to do it so I guess that kind of brings me to my next question then is I know you guys were talking about, you know, underrepresented voices and, and wanting to give people a platform that, that maybe doesn't have one or don't know where to turn or, or what have you. Um, is there a thing, do you guys have anything like an online submission form or anything that like, if somebody was interested and they were like, Hey, I think my voice would fit in well, like I want to audition whatever you want to call it do you guys have anything like that where somebody could reach out to you guys and and submit whether it be art or story or whatever the case may be that's a great question um i'll hop in because i was just wanting to say something that's connected to that too so there's not really like a um you know um send us your 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 ideas and stuff page that being said we're always open to connecting with people who do have stories, who have ideas. Um, there is a contact us page on the website that is easy, that you can just you contact us about anything. So that would be one way to do it. Okay. Um, you know, if, if, if absolutely we, while we have, we have things in the works, we want to talk to people. We, we, we love to have, have that conversation. We want to hear those voices. Um, and one of the pages on our um, website actually is called Heroes. So if you go there, you, this isn't even for people who have an idea like I've got an idea about a comic book or a story or I've, I'm an artist. This is just if you just have someone who is a hero in your life, right? We're not talking about, you know, a superhero flying around in a cape. We're talking about, you know, um, your mom's a nurse 
um, you know, uh, your, your granddad, you know, took care of, you know, all the family's kids every afternoon, some just some regular hero kind of story. We'd love to hear that because we do have some ideas for some ways to lift up those stories um, uh, in new and creative ways, too. So if you have a story that you'd just like to share, you, you may not have an idea for a whole comic book, but you you know somebody who qualifies as a hero. We'd love to hear that. Oh, wow. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope people take advantage of that because that sounds amazing. And it's a really cool way to, uh, you know, recognize those people, whether it be like you were saying, a parent or a teacher or an older brother or sister, or what have you. Like that's, yeah. that's a really cool way to kind of recognize them and as well. Yeah. When you think yeah. about like the um, your military folks, right, vets, um, think about folks who are in emergency services, right? medics, fire departments, police officers, people putting their, their lives on the line every day, being very heroic, but, you know, getting a paycheck for that. But their lives, I mean, wow, they, they see amazing things and are capable of amazing things. You know, people that went through 9-11, you know, I was in D.C. at that time. But these guys were heroes with no capes. And, you know, we, we still have so many everyday heroes that are out there from the moms and dads to the the fire department fire department chiefs, you know, um, to the doctors and the nurses that are out there saving lives, right? Um, to the people who are telling, who are, who are not keeping their mouths closed about the truth, you know? So people who are very bold and courageous. Um, and that's kind of the way we want to be to elevate those kind of stories. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll just um, piggyback on that with the whole hero thing. It's really about, again, the you and universe is about our universe fam there is no universe comics without you so what we want to do and why we wanted to create that page was for an opportunity for us to be able to share your stories the people that matter to you the people that again like dave said and sky said that have touched your life in an impactful way that helped you tread a new course in life so your teachers, your professors, your coaches, your um, heck, the janitor at your school sometimes gives you some advice that you will never forget. And you're like, man, that really changed my life. It doesn't matter what position someone has or the title of their job. Anyone at any time can be a hero in someone else's story. And we want to be able to share that with the world. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I think that's actually really, really cool. Um, and and I do hope that people take advantage of that because that's that's incredible. And what better way to kind of recognize recognize those people and stuff? I mean, I know like if somebody you know immortalized me in a comic, like I'd be like, this is the coolest thing ever, you know. So I mean, that's just that's awesome. Um, and you know, that's that's just really really neat. I love what you guys are doing, man. It's not just a comic, you know, like I learned a lot today. Like it's not just a comic that you guys are doing. Like you guys are really trying to like connect with the communities and, and uh, you know, raise, like you were saying, those, those um, voices that are underheard and undervalued and um, you know, give people a platform and, and let people see themselves in these books and these characters and things. And I think that's absolutely incredible. Um yeah, I think that's amazing. Like I said, like I learned a lot today. There's a lot of stuff I didn't know, obviously. So I think that's that's really, really cool. And I like what you guys are doing, you know, as a company. Um, I really dig the book from what I've read so far. I will have to go back and read episode one. But uh, I know I, I really dug the preview um, when I read that. Uh, it was it was really good and it dragged me in. And I like the, you know, the little bios and things for each character and, and all that because um, it kind of helped you you didn't feel like you were not knowing who they were you know what i mean you kind of felt like you knew who they were kind of right off the get-go that way and it wasn't taking six issues for you to be like do i like this character i don't know you know <laughs> right. uh, like, yeah so like the little bios and stuff was great and um yeah and i look forward to to that you know episode two when that drops towards the end of march i think that's just absolutely incredible and um, you know, good luck to you guys with everything you guys are doing. I think it, it's really, really cool. And I can't wait to see what you guys got in store for the future. Oh, so man. Th thank you so much, much Matt, for I having us. It. 
Yeah, I no, not a problem. Come back on anytime. I know our scheduling, mine and Mike scheduling is is off wonky and stuff because our full time jobs eat up a lot of our life. But and you um, never know when it's gonna snow. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Yeah, he messaged That's me right. at one point. He goes, I'm almost home. I'm so sorry, but that was like a half hour ago. So yeah, I, no like, I don't yeah. think he's gonna jump on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no so we'll definitely have to get you guys back on again in the future. Make sure that we can get your lead artist on and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I think this might be like the second interview maybe that we've done on this channel. We really don't do interviews that much. A lot of it's just kind of like us BSing and whatnot. So we used to do a podcast back in the day. There's four of us that we did a pod and we interviewed everybody from legends to startups, you know, and everybody in between. Uh, but when Mike and I did this, we, we haven't uh, really interviewed people. So these are really kind of the, the first ones. Um, the other one that we interviewed was a buddy of ours that designed some uh, logos and stuff for us. So you guys are really like the first like actual awesome. like comic book related thing that we've had on this channel. So it's a first. It is an honor. All thank right. You so we, we, it, we, thank you for the privilege, brother. We appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Oh, and also I just want to say, you know, obviously, like I said, we learned a lot, you know, today and stuff about the company and stuff as a whole. But just so everybody that's listening or watching knows as well, Gerald is a, that he's a real dude um he would message me on instagram we were talking and stuff for a while now and there was a point where i kind of discussed on the channel where i had i really was suffering with mental health issues and uh there was just a lot going on and it was really kind of bugging me out and stuff and you know he came on i was like yeah i'm just struggling you know but he would check in every once in a while he's never met me he's never spoken to me before this is the first time we've actually seen each other face to face and, uh, you know, he would reach out and just be like, you doing good? Like, how's life? You know, and just check in. And I, little did you know, I truly appreciated that. Um, and I, and I probably needed that more than I realized at the time too. Uh, cause I was just not in a good place at that point, but, um, life's great now. Like uh, that was all good now, but I, I do appreciate that. And that really kind of blew me away. And I was like, you know what, this is a real dude. So I was like, I, I definitely want to speak with him some more. So thank you for that, by the way, I don't think I've really got a chance to say that. Hey man, uh, I, I appreciate you just, um, even being willing to converse. I mean, I, I care, I, I care when I, I got a good sense of the type of guy you were just from watching your videos and all that stuff. So if anybody's going through anything and there's anything we can do to help, I mean, help you help your fellow, help your fellow humans, man. Help Absolutely. your fellow. Like, yeah. Even just like that. Hey, how's it going? It, it can, yeah. it can make a world of difference. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Gerald is a real fisher of men. He, he's got a, he's <laughs> got a group of guys that he keeps up with. I got, I got invited to that group one time and the, uh, to feel the love and the reverence that they had for Gerald um, was really awesome. You know, because uh, almost a, a lifetime passed between the last time I spoke with Gerald. It had been almost 20 years. Um, but when he reached back to me, I thought, I wonder what kind of guy he's become, you know, because time can change people. Yeah. But change. I was so relieved and uh, just felt so warm that he was still that same guy that I knew um, in my early 20s and, and just better by 20 years, just aged, you know, like wine, right? <laughs> <laughs> by, by like wine and, and like white hair. I mean, a lot more gray. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, oh, that is awesome. So, yeah, I'm more than happy to help support you guys. Like I said, I'll have to grab that issue and a hoodie while I'm at it. And, uh, like I said, I'll leave a link and everything down below. Anything else that you guys want to throw out, feel free. And uh, yeah, if nothing else, we'll have you guys back on for sure. I maybe after episode two drops, we can we can dive in. I'll read one and two, and get Mike to read one and two, and then we'll uh, we'll converse again and and kind of catch up and stuff on the story and where we're headed and dive Good a little plans. bit more into the actual story. That would yeah, be a privilege it. and an honor, Matt. Man, uh, again, I, I I just want to say thank you for being a real dude. I mean, you know we we're just an upstart and uh for you to even be willing to just to put anything out about you know the the preview edition what was was really just stand up i mean you didn't have to do that but you chose to do that and it was greatly appreciated and you, you know it just reflects on the guy that that you are and um thank you for this opportunity as well so we look forward to building from here 
Yeah, no, thank you. Like I said, I really enjoyed it, which is why I, I wrote about it originally when I read the preview, because I, I did thoroughly enjoy it. So anytime I enjoy something, especially if it's stuff that people have never heard of, I always try to be, uh, you know, I always try to push it and get pe more people into it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, you try. So there you go. There you go. But All right. Well, thank you guys very awesome. much. I hope you all have a wonderful evening.